then we'll open it to a Q&A period. Um, this is an incredible opportunity to hear from Sano um, very candidly about her experiences. And we would love for you to either send um, a question in the chat to me directly or um, just unmute yourself, introduce yourself with your name, year, and major, and uh, feel free to ask your question. So um, without further ado, um, Sano, if you wouldn't mind giving us a little skim of your UVA and professional resume thus far, that can include your major, any organizations you're in, and then what you've done so far after graduation. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sana Nagai. Uh, just like Ryan said, I actually was a part of the ECO when I was at UVA, so did his exact job um, back in the day uh, putting together these events. So really excited to kind of come full circle and be on the other side now. Um, at UVA. Otherwise, you might have read in my bio, but I was a part of a couple of different dance groups. So Virginia Dance, dance Company and the Academics Dance Clubs. Um, and that's something that I've continued to enjoy. I actually live in Denver now. So I moved away from Virginia for a couple years, but have been enjoying uh, staying act active, doing dance classes. I learned how to snowboard as an adult, which was fun. Um, just uh, spending time outdoors. So that's me on the personal side. And in terms of professional, um, I actually use the ECO to find uh, opportunities in terms of internships and uh, full-time opportunities. I did intern at Yext, which some of you might have heard of. I think Yext still has a pretty good relationship with UVA. Um, and I interned there uh, and then went straight into a full-time um, after the summer after that. So I was at Yex for a couple of years as a technical project manager there um, and then decided I wanted to do something different um, in the same space, but just kind of go to a lot, slightly larger company, see what that structure looked like. So I moved to Smartsheet, uh, which is a another kind of software company. And so I did similar work in the consulting department at that company, um, doing some project management, doing some consulting uh, implementation there. And then after a couple of years there, I decided actually, I kind of want to try doing something small again. So I went way smaller and now I'm at a startup called OXO Solutions. Uh, so I'm a, still doing technical project management just in various different environments to kind of see what I like best. But that's that's where I am now. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so I guess starting with your current job role, would you please describe um, what Oslo Solutions does, um, as well as maybe what the, who the clients are, what the service is like in the industry, and then also what your job entails as a technical project manager, maybe providing like a day-to-day? -day. Sure. So I think I'll kind of flip it around. So uh, generally as a technical project manager, my day-to-day -day consists of specifically in the software space, a lot of just agile and scrum ceremonies. So not sure how familiar um, folks are with agile and scrum, but uh, it's essentially a, a way of managing the work. So it's kind of a project management methodology in terms of how we get updates from the team, um, make sure that I'm, I'm aware of all the updates so that I can communicate that with external stakeholders uh, or internal stakeholders as needed um, and kind of keep things moving uh, with a daily cadence. So kind of checking in daily, giving updates daily um, so that we're not waiting for a weekly check-in once, you know, once a week or having really long meetings uh, once every couple of weeks. So it's meant to be more of a fast-paced project management methodology. So that's what I um, have used at all of my different companies that I've worked at just because they are in the software space. Um, so day to day, lots of meetings in terms of making sure I'm, I'm up to date on what my team is working on, uh, what I need to be delivering to the business and um, our external stakeholders. And in terms of those external stakeholders, OXO Solutions in particular works a lot with the insurance um, and finance uh, industries, and we're kind of slowly creeping into healthcare. Uh, but the reason why those three are kind of big on our radar right now is because OXO itself builds custom applications to kind of do whatever that business needs. And our team in particular right now as a startup, on, as a smaller team, has a lot of experience in those sectors. So some people have come directly from insurance to come into our team to say, as an, an underwriter, I know that you need to do 
these kinds of things in the industry. So how can we build a platform that does that for them? So that I think the industries right now that we're working in are very heavily influenced by the experience that the, the people on the startup have. Amazing. Thank you so much. And um, in terms of making the move away from Smartsheet um, as a senior solutions consultant to Oxford Solutions, could you talk about that and maybe how those two roles differed? You spoke about the size a little bit, but how does that change your responsibilities in day to day? Sure. So at Smartsheet, um, it was very structured, which I think that is what I was looking for when I moved to Smartsheet originally. Um, there were a lot of folks who had come not from the software space, actually, more from like Deloitte, EY, Accenture, kind of traditional consulting firms that you might think of, um, and then applying themselves in the software space. So it was really interesting for me to join there coming just from software and then kind of mixing with those more traditional consulting practices. Um, and I thought that I gained a lot of great skills there. I, I felt that I was I was growing, but eventually the reason why I decided to move was I felt like I wanted to be able to take those skills that I had learned and kind of influence a team of my own or maybe a smaller team, uh, just given that with the size being so big at Smartsheet, they're kind of kind of at any company, I'm sure, but just a lot of layers of bureaucracy. I was like, I want to change a process here. I think there's chances to optimize, um, but it was really hard to make that uh, more of a process like widespread or be able to share that to other teams. And so that is something I was looking for because I like to see and be able to influence change uh, in teams that I'm working with. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. Sure. And and um, in terms of uh, the econ degree and your focus specifically on IO and international economics and some other internships and experiences you had, I was wondering how those classes and different roles prepared you for a job as a senior consultant out of college. Sure. Um, so I do think that econ in general teaches you to be pretty logical about kind of how you approach uh, situations. And I felt that that was helpful just kind of overall. I, I definitely don't, you know, do research in econ anymore. I just did that in undergrad and on, I quite honestly haven't done that since. But um, I think the approach of doing some re research, making data driven decisions, that is something I think that comes in handy in, um, you know, a role such as consulting or project management. And Honestly, I really liked the aspect um, in my under or extracurricular activities of like planning these events and like staying organized, uh, networking with uh, those other econ, econ alums that helped me uh, recognize kind of my strengths in organization, uh, communication, building relationships. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And is there any kind of coursework or experiences that you would specifically point to for a student to maybe do? if they're looking to enter the similar field as you. Um, and that being said, also outside of the econ major, now there's options for data science as well as other computer science um, coursework. Yeah, I um, I wish I had taken data science classes. Honestly, I feel like I see a lot of opportunity there to kind of expand beyond a project management role or even be able to leverage those skills um, in data science in a project management or consulting capacity. Um, something that I... Uh, think really helped influence me move into the software space was I did just on a whim take uh, like, uh, I can't remember exactly what the course name was, but it was basically computer science 101 um, my first year. And I honestly was not the best at it, but I did like it enough in the sense that I knew I wasn't going to be fast. I wasn't going to be an engineer or a coder, but I liked kind of the logical thought process that you needed to work through those problems. And I think that is what ultimately made me look and consider any software jobs, knowing that I couldn't code. I was like, okay, what else can I do in that tech space that can utilize my other skills that are, are not being an engineer? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And then in terms of applying out of undergrad into full-time roles and other internships that you had while in an undergraduate, I was wondering what that process kind of looked like for you and what you thought really helped you in that application process. And then at the same time, if you could talk a little bit about how the eco specifically helped you with uh, receiving those roles and preparing for interviews. Sure. So I feel like UVA has so many resources, you know, eco 
uh, of course, in the department, but then also just a bunch of other majors or like the college or engineering school, like they all have really great career fairs and like websites that you can take a look at. And um, I think we were like, I think we were using Handshake. I don't know if you guys still use that, but um, I feel like having all of those resources available definitely made a big difference because I felt like I, um, you know, it was a little overwhelming. There were a lot of resources, but I felt like I, if I applied myself, I could go look for things. And then um, I, I felt like I met with uh, career counselors every once in a while and kind of showed them my resume, had them review it so I could get some pointers on what to look out for. Uh, I was looking on Handshake a lot, looking at job descriptions. Um, and then in terms of the eco itself, I think these kinds of events, uh, being the person that was coordinating them, but also, you know, sitting in on any ones that uh, my partner was coordinating, I felt like it was great to just get exposure to what people were doing, even if it was something I was didn't think I was that interested in it. It always ends up being interesting finding someone's story out or that's kind of how I felt. So I liked that exposure, um, being in the eco, having these events. Uh, and honestly, Jen is such a great resource. Um, I really utilized her. I kind of told her what my options were and what my passions were uh, coming out of college. And she truly helped connect me with other alums that she had relationships with as well. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. And to everyone on the call right now, if you do want to meet with Jen, Jen has one on one advising during the week. And if you're not an econ major, um, she has non econ major advising on Fridays. Um, and I'll be following up with an email after this event. And if you want to respond, I can send you where to fill out um, for that econ advising. And you can also just go to the econ career office website and uh, find it there. Um, but moving on into another question. Um, now that you're in the full-time role and maybe have helped in recruiting or seen people coming out of college, although maybe your current company and past are looking um, to hire heavily out of undergraduate, but what in your mind do people who are looking for a project manager, what do, who, what do they look for in students coming out of college that are kind of going into that career field? Yeah, I think um, I've been on the side interviewing for a couple uh, roles now. Um, so I think something that stands out to me is really knowing knowing your resume so that it's it's pretty clear you know you know what your strengths are you know what your experience is and you can share that uh, with the interviewer I think that's important and honestly uh, I think a lot of the times now which is what, what's great about the internet is that you can really look up what kind of behavioral questions might be asked of you whether it's for that specific company or just in general um, I know that's even true for just like technical roles as well sometimes you can find what kind of questions have been asked in a technical capacity. And it really helps to see how prepared you are uh, as an interviewee, seeing for some of those main behavioral questions, like what's the time you failed and how did you overcome it? Or, you know, have you ever disagreed with a team member? Uh, how do you manage juggling priorities, different priorities? I think there's a couple that are kind of in that realm of project management, at least, that I feel like get asked often and just knowing yourself enough, knowing your experience enough to have an answer for those is just shows how prepared you are and how organized you can be coming into um, a job or a project. Yeah. And in, in, in the application process, is there usually a typical timeline for these kind of jobs as well as any typical way that the interview process happens, whether that starts with networking and and then certain interview rounds, or is it pretty dependent on where you're interviewing and where you applied? I would say it's pretty dependent. Um, I, I feel like nowadays it's really common to do everything over Zoom. And it, that might just be because my last couple of roles have been remote. So um, I'm pretty used to that by now. But uh, a lot of the times the pattern I see is you get, uh, well, this might not be true coming straight out of undergrad, but um, you would do like a phone screening uh, with a recruiter, someone that's not necessarily in your specific role. And then from there, you would move into role specific interviews. I've just done a bunch over Zoom. Um, I know some now people are trying to push more uh, back to office, so that might be different, but um, that's my experience so far. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, I have a couple more questions, but I do want to open it up to all of the students here right now. Um, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself, introduce yourself with your uh, your year major, um, and then ask away. Um, so if anyone wants to take it away, or you can 
uh, message me privately over the chat or just message the chat um, more broadly if you don't want to unmute yourself and speak. Um, okay, so the question is, what type of internships were you looking for as an econ undergrad? Um, thanks, Aman. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I actually was not looking just in software. I know I ended up going into software, but I was looking at kind of the typical like business analyst or like management consulting um, type of internships. Uh, for me personally, what it came down to was the interview experience. Uh, I, it's not like I didn't like those other companies or that I didn't feel like those the people interviewing me were uh, great people, but I felt like the more software uh, interviews I did, the more kind of problems that they were throwing at me in the kind of case round of consulting interviews, I felt like those were more interesting problems that I was wanting to solve on those calls. Uh, so I ended up uh, kind of honing in on the software piece, but in the beginning, I was definitely casting a wide net um, in terms of internships. I hope that answered your question. Um, I think with business analysis and, and honestly, a lot of just consulting um, roles, and sorry for folks, I'm sure you're reading the chat, uh, uh, but I think looking at how different companies structure their case interviews and just kind of honestly like Googling that uh, was helpful so that I knew like what kind of approach to take. But honestly, I, I think in any kind of case interview or analysis interview, it's really important to speak through as much of what you're thinking through as possible so that you can communicate with the interviewer what your thought process is, how organized you are, what your organization style is when you're solving a problem or analyzing um, data so that you can so that they can gather information on you about how you work and how you visualize things um, and and see if see if you're a right fit. I think just being more communicative is uh, always a good thing in those kinds of interviews. Adding on to that, um, before the interviews, developing those skills, was there any certain way you did it or any resources that you'd strongly recommend? And then I was also wondering how you developed um, the agile and scrum skills and whether that was something that was super necessary prior to the role or something you learned on the job. Yeah, great questions. I think, um, the first, for the first question, um, in terms of how I prepared, I feel like I honestly went into a lot of those like career counseling um, type of discussions, like very early on with a, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you please help me? Like, what are, what are some of the things that I need to be asking so that I can get ahead? Um, and I mean, everyone at UVA is super nice. So they, they were okay that I was starting from zero. So just quick plug for everyone. Um, but I think, uh, you know, with Jen, she helped me do interview practice with other career counselors as well. Like if you bring a certain type of job description, you know, they'll kind of help ask probing questions so that you can one, understand if the job description is like really what you're looking for, but also too, like they can also help you with certain types of interviews. So I think I personally found that helpful to just go to speak to a person. I do know there's a lot of services now um, that you can kind of learn about the interview process or do mock interviews in a like internet uh, platform. I personally didn't use those when I was looking, but I have heard like friends that have used those kinds of like platforms um, and like found them really helpful. So I think it just kind of depends on your learning style. Um, and then for the second question around the Agile and Scrum uh, pieces. I definitely didn't know anything about that going into uh, my first role. So it was very much uh, as an intern, I learned all of that on the on the job. Um, but then once I got into like a full time role, and then at Smartsheet, uh, Smartsheet actually gave us the opportunity to take a course that the company paid for that would give us some more um, training and fundamentals of Agile and Scrum. So that was really helpful for me to just kind of understand like the foundations and the, the official side of it. But I would say 
those principles are pretty easy to pick up. And um, for me, I'm a learn learn by doing kind of person. So I, I didn't think that um, I felt underprepared coming into it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And for everyone uh, on the call, what I just sent in the chat is um, VMOC. It's actually provided by UVA to all of us. Um, it can help you with your elevator pitch, as well as some other questions that might come up in a virtual interview. Um, you can also submit your resume and it will give you feedback on your resume using different AI tools. That's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyone else uh, with any questions um, on the call right now, feel free to send them in the chat or speak up. I can ask another in the meantime. Um, so you mentioned that uh, it's a fully remote job and that you've had others. I was wondering how you think that affects maybe the culture um, in the company as well as your relationship with coworkers? Yeah, um, I feel like I love the remote work, but I do enjoy when we get together in person. Um, I think like I was based, I graduated 2019. So I had like almost a full year of working and then we like suddenly went fully remote for COVID. And then since then I've, I've always been remote since 2020. Um, I think for my first role coming out of college, it wasn't that big of a deal because we had already established those relationships in person. And so it wasn't a huge shift to go to remote. But I think when I switched from there to Smartsheet, from Smartsheet to OXO, completely interviewing for and onboarding into and managing teams within the remote space, I think definitely is interesting. <laughs> um, I think it really puts the onus on you to speak up and ask questions when because there's not really like... You can't really pick up a vibe from someone in like the next desk over kind of looking a little bit lost or something. You kind of just have to do that yourself and speak up. So I think that is something that I learned to do, um, you know, being remote, but uh, with Smartsheet actually, because it's very, it was very client facing and more uh, traditional consulting practices were there. Uh, we did start to bring in more client onsites in my second year of working there, which I think was actually super helpful because I could, most of the time I was remote, I could just work from the comfort of my own home, kind of have a little bit of flexible schedule, but, you know, once a quarter or so, like once every couple of months, I would go to the client site and we would kind of all get in a room for a week and hash things out. And I feel like that was super helpful to meet my own teammates face-to-face, -to, -face, to build a relationship with the client client um, and kind of just get things done a little bit quicker, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I am a fan of getting together once in a while, making sure there's still that connection. But personally, I do love uh, the flexibility um, of being remote. Yeah, uh, my job is also remote Monday and Friday. So I understand the flexibility. It's really nice to be able to work from home, but also have some time with coworkers in person. Um, and then has the remote environment also allowed you outside of work to maybe travel or use it in a way that gives you a little more flexibility in terms of what you can do outside of work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before, um, you know, at Yext, I was working in the Tyson's Corner area in Virginia. Not sure if anybody's from Northern Virginia, but um, just kind of like outside of DC uh, in the suburbs. So that was very much, you know, going into the office every single day. Once I was remote and then I can't remember. Yeah. Once I was remote, basically, I was like, maybe I'll move somewhere else. I've been in Virginia my whole life. Um, not that I don't love Virginia. I'm actually moving back. But it was a good chance for me to say, like, I want to live somewhere else. I want to try it out and not really be affected in my pro professional life. So um, I'm out in Denver now. I've been here for a couple of years. And I think being in Denver, I do actually still work uh, East Coast hours, but I like it. I'm kind of a, a morning person. So I just do a seven to three. And, you know, it's bright out right now. It's 3.30 and I'll probably like go on a run or go to yoga afterwards. So I do like that flexibility. Yeah, that's amazing. It's it's nice to be able to enjoy some time outside of work. Um, well, that kind of brings a lot of my questions to a close. Um, I was wondering if anyone here still has any questions that they'd like to send in the chat or maybe unmute themselves and ask. Um, otherwise, Sano, I don't know if you have any last piece of advice or um, things that people should think about maybe um, when looking at this kind of industry or any other career field? Um, 
yeah, I guess like l parting advice, I would say like shameless plug, use the eco. <laughs> I do think it's really helpful. And like, I don't think, I know, I don't think it's ever too early to like be curious about things, but don't put pressure on yourself to find that perfect internship or find the perfect job out of college. You know, I'm five years out of college and I've, I'm on my third job and I have like specific reasons for wanting to look at different roles. And so, and I, I have a lot of friends that are, you know, my year in that same situation. So you know, it's always great to be curious, always great to be prepared, but don't feel like you, you know, are going to be locked in and have to find something perfect coming right out of undergrad. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone will kind of find their way. So. Yeah. And to everyone here right now, what I just sent in the chat are um, two flyers to the econ career forum. And this is a two day kind of event series um, involving a dinner, a keynote speech, a lunch, um, as well as office hours and a panel. Uh, this will be a chance to meet a lot of people from different industries that are UVA alum um, and hear about their experiences. And maybe it would influence you towards an industry that you might not have thought about before. So if you want to sign up, please feel free to go to Handshake, um, search Career Forum, and all of those events should show up there. Um, otherwise, if you can't find them, feel free to email me and I'd be happy to send them along. Um, also, shamelessly plugging the eco, uh, Jen is a great person to talk to if you have no idea what you want to do or if you have like all of the ideas um, she will help you with whatever and can connect you with a ton of resources that can help you out everywhere from networking all the way to interviewing and receiving the job offer. Um, so she's a great resource to re reach out to. And you can reach out to me as well with any questions um, or if you want to set up the time to talk about um, some other industry that maybe I know a little bit more about. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's a beautiful day out still. So hopefully people can still get some sun. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to hop off the call now, feel free to do so. Otherwise, if you want to stick around and ask some more questions, um, we'd also be happy to do that. Thanks, everyone.